Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, I just left my wife, and I feel 100% fine about it. Come, let's explore these real life stories. 10 years ago, I thought I had the perfect life, an upper six figure job, a beautiful wife, a clean house, two new cars, and a child on the way. My job made me happy, and I was good at it, and the stability was great. My wife loved me for me and ignored my flaws as I tried to perfect them. In return, I adored her and we seemed to be the perfect couple. People would always compliment us and talk about how envious they were of our relationship and everything kept getting better. I kept getting promotions, the kids, now three were born and we eventually moved from an ordinary house to an incredibly nice one. My wife was doing very well in her career in optometrist and we took fun vacations every year. Again, I thought I had it made. I don't know how this would have prompted it, but in early 2015, I bought her a Tesla for her birthday. She hadn't gotten a new car since 2008, and I kept getting new cars. Therefore, I surprised her. She loved it, loved me. I remember spending that entire day just taking rides in it and figuring out how all the gadgets and icons worked. It was complete downhill from there. I don't know how that would have triggered anything, but in the months following, she became increasingly distant, not only from me, but from her children. My oldest, 10, female, in particular, felt hurt by this and would often try to ensure conversations with her mother in order to get her talking. Some days this would work, and she would be pleasant, others, it would have had the opposite effect. The first time I suspected that I was no longer her man of choice was in July 2016 when I noticed she was no longer going to yoga classes but telling me she was. We were on the same phone plan and part of that plan was we could see the locations of our phones. I was routinely browsing the app one day and noticed she appeared to be at someone's house. Since she had been irrationally angry that day prior to leaving, I didn't question her about it when she got home from yoga. Instead, I chose to closely observe where she went during her yoga times. It would always seem to end up at the same house, in a well-off neighborhood, probably a step above ours, a little north of town. I was getting ready to confront her when I noticed that she had been returning to yoga again. During this period, she became incredibly distant and hormonal. My entire family had noticed this behavior going on for over a year now, but I had had enough. I sat her down and asked her what was going on. She gave me the cold shoulder, and when I questioned her about the yoga locations, she accused me of stalking, invading privacy, and being a grade-A jerk. That's when I asked her, are you cheating on me? Of course, the answer was no. What followed in the weeks to come was distrust, hatred, and plain anger towards me. It was clear she knew I had caught on and was now trying to play the I can't believe you'd think this victim card. But I knew, I saw through it all. When she finally admitted she had seen and been intimate with another man, that's when I made my mistake. I forgave her. She told me she loved me, she loved our family, and in that moment, I believed her. I thought she could change. I was wrong. We tried marriage therapy, we tried taking adult days. It seemed to work. We were happy, and she was genuinely having fun, and it seemed like I had the old her back. I was relieved. This allowed me to pour more time into my kids and my work and have less stress overall. My business trip to San Diego was cut short. My colleague fell ill and our clients insisted that we reschedule. It was a hassle, but we caught the next flight out and returned home. I'm not sure why I didn't tell her I was coming home, but I just didn't. Maybe I wanted it to be a surprise. The only surprise I received when I pulled into the driveway was seeing a Ford SUV in my garage and finding not one, but two men in my bed with my wife. This all happened yesterday. I'm finally putting it into words. My wife started babbling when it happened, desperately trying to explain. I heard none of it. I walked out of my room, went to the basement, and poured myself a drink. I could hear the men upstairs leaving, and when I returned upstairs, it was my wife sitting there, clothed with a sad smile on her face. She started talking, but I wouldn't have it. I told her to get out. I told her to get out of my house. I informed her that I'd get her stuff to her by the end of the week. She tried to pull the what about the kids nonsense, but I was just done. 
I'm sad, but not for her. I'm sad for my kids, and I'm sad for whatever poor soul she meets next. I will fight hard for my kids, but my biggest fear is losing them. I know the court will rule incredibly in favor of mothers. I hope they realize that I've spent the last three years doing my best to mend a broken marriage for my family, and nothing has worked. I told my kids this morning. They asked why mom didn't spend the night last night. I didn't make them go to school today. They're all upstairs together. This whole situation is terrible for everyone involved. It could have been completely preventable. I don't pity my wife. I hope that she has one label for the rest of her life, a cheater. I want her to be followed by it. I want people to know. She is a prominent optometrist in our area. This could very well hurt her business if word spreads. A happy update. Two months ago, I came home from a business trip to find my wife in bed with two men. This was after multiple years of her deliberately deceiving our family, and I was foolish enough to take her back after I already caught her cheating with someone much older and much richer than me. After telling her to get out, she became hostile and threatened to take my kids away from me. I was beyond concerned at this point. I've heard horror stories in the courtrooms about mothers getting their way no matter what, so I had no idea what to expect. I had to take time off from work this summer because I was consistently feeling sick and couldn't deal with the thought of my ex-wife watching over our children. If they grow up anything like her, I'll consider myself a parental failure. I put in my plea for full custody and officially filed for a divorce on May 21st, 2018. I hired a lawyer from my best friend at work who initially tried to do it all for free after he heard what happened, but I simply wouldn't feel right, and he hopped on the case. Together, we went through my phone records, her phone location records, and gathered everything we possibly could to build our case. The court ceremony began on July 12th, the week after my kids and I returned from our vacation. I did not take them out of state, following my lawyer's advice, but it was a good little distraction. My 10-year-old daughter, oldest, seemed to be emotionally stable enough to answer some questions by both lawyers, even after I requested her not to have to deal with this whole thing. She stated how my ex-wife had been difficult and paranoid for the last year, but she had learned to live with it, which is something no child should have to experience. However, the thing that tipped the ceremony was her announcement of moving to Southern California, which would mean the kids would have to pick. All three of them picked me. Her lawyers tried to argue that I was sabotaging them, influencing the kids to pick me over her, but the answer was clear. They wanted to stay in the same house, with the same friends, in the same school. The court ruled in favor of them living full-time with me. They were permitted to visit their mother whenever they please, as long as the visit does not extend to 14 days without me. In addition, she is no longer allowed on my property, and that includes our South Carolina residence, my plot of land in Boulder, and any one of the office buildings that my company operates out of. My parents and immediate relatives have also put in requests so that she does not enter any of their homes as well. Ultimately, I'm completely relieved. It's the least stressed I've been in the past three years. It's a little sad knowing my marriage failed, but I realized I'm not responsible for that, and I'm going to take these next couple of years to myself and devote my time to my children. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.